it's a done deal. Amen. The whole thing. That's the word of Christ. That's the word of Christ. And it's to dwell in us richly. That he's got so much more to say about Christ. All of chapter 2 is, is about the, the wonder that Christ is. Matter of fact, look, look at the end of chapter 1 here. I want to show you one, one, one other. He says in verse 27, To them God chose to make known how great among the Gentiles are the riches of the glory of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. What? Christ in who? The Gentiles. Look, you got everything from creation up to Christ Jesus. This is Jews, 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 Jews. It's Israel, it's Israel. It's Israel's prophet. It's Israel's teacher. It's Israel's salvation. It's all about Israel's Messiah. They come to Christ. And he is Jewish. He is dying for the, the, the Jewish people. He is their Messiah. And then this thing gets opened up. The Gentiles. Gentiles are in it too. So now you're going to have Jews, Gentiles in the church. Good old dispensational understanding of everything. He's doing something there. He did a significant thing. What is it that you Gentiles get to have now? Christ in you. The hope of glory. Same Christ. Mm. In you. That's the hope of glory. Chapter 2. All about what Jesus did. How he disarmed principalities and powers. Even those that could have accused you. He's disarming. He's taking everything that was against you. Nailing it to his cross. You're not condemned anymore. So he says, since all of that took place with him, why do you now believe that by doing certain ascetic practices or certain little rituals or ceremonies or days or any other thing, why would you think that's going to amount to anything? That isn't how you got there. Why are you thinking that's what's going to keep you there? Chapter 3 he reminds us then, if you are risen with Christ, and if he's really taken all those things and nailed them, and if you're risen with Christ, don't you think it's time to seek something bigger than just the normal earthly things? Can you, can you let your mind get up there where Jesus actually is? That's where you are. I know we're all right here from the this point day. But I also know this. You are seated in Christ Jesus in heavenly places today. Don't ask me how that takes place because I have to live in a world of geography of my own and I, I don't think it's got much to do with geography. That's the word supposed to dwell on your history. So that when you're facing anything, you're facing this. Today, I know I have been forgiven for it. I have been accepted by God Almighty. I am a part of a plan that's been going on since before eternity. And I know it's a plan that I've got hope in the end. I know I've got confidence where this thing is going. Amen. I know that whatever I'm facing today is like boot camp. I'm just learning. It's not going to destroy me. It will not kill me. He didn't make it to kill me. He made it to mature me. And I received this thing today with thanksgiving. Why? Because Christ is in me. Now he takes that word of Christ that's dwelling in his roots and he says, Now, in all wisdom, teach and admonish each other. Look at this. You were saved for community. Oh yeah, you're saved individually. No doubt about it. But you were saved for community. And I'm trusting that what most of you are here for is so that you can minister to that community. You're, you're gaining more and more information, knowledge, and understanding, and uh, practicality so that you can go back to community at large and speak to community at large. This is how we're to live. With the word of Christ dwelling on us richly, in all wisdom, let me teach you, let me counsel you, let me, let me work with you. We're all in this thing together trying to understand how this works out. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I'm blind to what goes on. I need somebody that can teach me. I need somebody that can stop me and say, Doug, what you're doing right now is not a fulfillment of what Jesus said to do. 
Oh, well, how do I make the transition? I'm glad there's a, someone with the word of Christ going on richly that can look that over and say, try this. This is what Jesus said to do. I can take that. He said that we're to sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. It's, that's what I'm telling you about this beautiful book. Here's Colossians 3.16 is what's saying it. But Colossians 3.16 just catapulted us right back to David. Here's the Psalms. And I don't doubt that the Psalms were including Proverbs and the other wisdom literature, but you're going to use the big, big book to include that. But let's just go back to the Psalms. Those Psalms are the prayers of the Lord Jesus Christ. How do I know that? Because Peter already told me that all the prophets spoke by the Spirit of Christ that was in them. And the Spirit of Christ that was in them was speaking the words. And the prophet is looking and saying, yeah, I'm not altogether sure I know what I just said. But I know that you're the one that had me say it. So even though I, don't, I can know this, it may not be written for me right now. It's written for those people who are going to be in Brooks Bible College here in a Thursday in October. That's who it's written for. And I know they can take these words and rehearse them, repeat them. There'll be somebody who's going to read Psalm 139. And everybody that's got the Spirit of God in them is going to say, oh, I love that song. I love knowing that God's got me under over and around on both sides. I love knowing that the God I serve is the God who created me, who knit me in the womb of my mother, who gave me this body and gave me the number of days. That's who I'm serving. Not a concept. Incomplete. So he says, sing him with grace in your hearts to the Lord. There it is. Now that I know I, I'm sitting right square in the middle of God's undeserved favor and merit, in humility I sing in it, grace. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for all the things that I can say to my brothers and sisters. Let the word of Christ dwell in yours. Don't, don't forget Christ is. Don't forget Christ. That's what he's about. That's what this is. Don't get bogged up in the details. Don't get down in the weeds choking out. Look up. There he is. Let that take your residence in there. You see, this is not just an idea. He is a living Christ. Light in you. That's what you left well richly. Father, thank you so much that Jesus Christ really is Lord, Lord of everything. I ask just now in the name of Jesus that you let us have that word dwelling in us richly. Thank you that there even is a word. Thank you for the words of Christ Himself, teachings that He had. Help us to honor those teachings, listen to them, understand them, observe them, keep them. They are the rich words of our Creator God. Help us to remember all the doctrine of who this Jesus is. All the things that this Christ is to be all the way from the beginning. The Messiah who delivers us. The Messiah who will be the King of kings and Lord of lords. Let that resound in us, Father. Thank you for what you're doing. In Jesus' name. Amen.